Hey, it's been a while. I've been working on a model rocket launch controller. Good friend of mine reached out to me, said, hey, can we make something that's really fun for the kids, lights, sounds? I'm like, of course we can. We can use a microcontroller. We can put in some LEDs, make it make some sounds. We can have a really a good time with this. So that's what I've been off doing, building a rocket model controller. And that's what I'm going to share with you. So we're going to sit down. We're going to go over the schematic. We're going to look at the prototype I put together. We're going to talk about designing the PCB, getting the PCB manufactured, getting the PCB back, putting it in the case, putting it all together. And then we're going to go out in the field and we're going to launch some model rockets with it. So stay tuned. We're about to have a blast, quite literally. Okay. So one of the first things you need to do on a project, especially one that you're doing for somebody else, is gather a set of requirements. The requirements tell you what it is uh, you need to deliver and also provide you with a way to determine success. You know, have I met all of the requirements of the system? Um, if you're not, if you if you're never worked for a company where you're having to do hardware or software, I'm a software guy, um, this might be a new concept to you. You probably do it mentally. But it's not a bad idea to write it down. So since I'm doing this for a friend of mine, um, I talked to him and we came up with a list of, of requirements. And they are uh, that it's battery powered and the battery can repl be replaced in the field. Um, that we should have a series of safety checks before launch. He wants these as, as kind of buttons. You know, the weather's clear, the pad is clear, and I think we're going to do the range is clear. There's three of them. And I should write that here, that there was three. A safety button that must be pressed while the launch button is pressed, so you can't accidentally launch. Must be capable of handling large rocket engines, which means higher currents. Must have a, a continuity check to verify engine connections. And that's because we, have, we can launch two rockets with this, and a continuity check tells us that the clips um, are correctly tied to the igniter for the rocket engine. Uh, for a cool factor, we want a key to power the whole thing on. You turn the key. Uh, we want sounds at different stages of the pre-launch check and the launch. Uh, the wow factor for the kids. In fact, these are going to be replaceable. You can have different sets of sounds. You know, you can maybe have Star Wars in one and just NASA sounds in another or something. You must be able to launch two rockets, either one at a time or together. Um, and then he told me like some of the colors that he wanted. So we have like a power LED is blue, continuities are red, the ready buttons, which really represent this 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 checkoff process here, weather clear. Those are green after they've been pressed. So now that we actually kind of know what we're delivering, and what is that? That is a battery powered um, model rocket launch controller that has a key to turn it on, can handle up to two rockets and launch them in sync or one at a time, has some additional fun buttons for you know weather clear, pad clear, range clear, has sounds that play when you press those kind of things, and can check continuity, and also can launch uh, large rockets, and has safety, has a safety button. Once you know that, now you can go and start trying to come up with the design, and that's what we're gonna look at next, is the actual design. All right, so I am in KiCad right now, and I'm going to show you the schematics. So there's actually two pages. Let me see if I can roll this up and try to maintain a size that is helpful for you. Um, let's go to the second page first, which is really just all the cable connections. If we look at this, remember our requirements. We've basically got, we're going to use two battery sources. This is from having done some testing. Uh, this is going to give us about 14.8 volts, uh, at least after first charge, you know, if it's charged. This is used to drive the igniter. This is what we're going to use to launch the rocket. And this battery source over here is what we're going to use to drive the circuitry. 5 volts, basically. We'll talk about that. We've got some switches here, power switches. We've got LEDs. And you'll notice all of these have connectors on them. So it's designed this way so that I can build out the boards, or board in this case, and my friend can actually then build the case separate, plug the pieces in, 
So, and I'll show you the finished um, panel and stuff. So, to, to actually talk a little bit about that, we're putting it into a Pelican case. It'll have, when you open the Pelican case, it'll have a, a panel on the top, you know, with the with the key and the lights and status and all that kind of stuff. But you'll be able to lift that up. Underneath it will be the PCB as well as the battery sources. The battery sources are going to be plugged in and it'll be keyed using a, an XT60 connector. Those are those connectors are uh, typically used for like RC devices. Um, and our, a lot of RC devices use um, a lot of current. They draw a lot of current on the engines. Like for race cars, that kind of stuff, you know. Um, got a speaker connector, audio taper, pot for volume. We, we're using arcade buttons uh, for the safety button and, and the launch button. And our arcade button, if you haven't seen my video on my Retro Pie cabinet, you should go watch it. But those are the buttons I've actually used. I've got extras. And it has a light in it. It has an LED in it. So this allows me to control that LED you know, you press the safety down. The safety light only comes on after you've gone through the, the checks and there's continuity. And then you press that down and the launch button starts to strobe. You press that and you launch. So this is just all the connections. And then if we go back, this is where the, all the magic really happens. So let's take a look at this. We're going to have a couple inputs from both the 14.8 volt battery pack and the 7.4. You can really think of this as like the 7.4, we're gonna go through a, a regulator, it's the five volt power supply. The other one is the launch. They're separated on purpose because when we launch, those batteries take a, mat. the launch batteries take a massive hit in current draw. Um, so much so that I have actually seen a reset on the Nano. Now, you could solve that if you didn't have the option to use the two battery packs. Uh, it's really done with capacitors. You want to do a lot of smoothing and a lot of capacitors to make sure that you don't have those kind of drops. Honestly, it's just easier to do it this way. So that's why it's done this way. So we're going to have those inputs so he can connect them. Uh, we've got, this is the key. You turn the key. Power can flow once the key. So I'm switching ground here. Um, we're using a 7805, which is a voltage regulator, to step down to 5 volts for the rest of the circuitry. Uh, an LM7805 is an okay regulator. It's not great for things that are driven by battery because the delta, the difference between the input voltage and the output voltage, voltage is converted to heat, which means we're wasting 2.4 volts. Um, and it's never good with any battery system to waste anything. So you solve that typically with using a switching power, uh, a switching buck converter. Um, and so why did I do it this way? Well, I'm hoping that lots of people can use this schematic to build this. Uh, other scout groups or families, whatever. So it's easy to get 7805s. It's not hard to get a switching buck converter, but most people don't know about them. However, you can find switching buck converters now in the same package, meaning that they match the pinouts of the 7805. So you can actually just plug in the switching buck converter instead of the 7805 and get around the power loss, which is what I plan on doing. So let's take a look here. So at the heart of this, so now we've got our five volts, is an Arduino Nano. Pretty much almost, I guess every pin is almost used. I think they're almost all, they're all, all are used. So we've got a nano here. So we've got software involved, embedded software. And if we go over here, sorry about that. I'm trying to control this a little better. These are our buttons, push buttons for, you know, ready one, ready two, ready three, whatever he wants to use those for, for weather clear, pad clear, range clear. And we've got a little debounce stuff in there. And as you press those, then the LEDs can come on. And you can see that this is being fed into a microcontroller and this is coming out of the microcontroller to turn it on. So the microcontroller is maintaining a state. Like what has been done, what hasn't been done, so I know when we're ready for launch. 
Down here we are using an LM386. This is an audio amplifier. Uh, it's got an audio tapered pot on it. And here we're using the DF Mini Player. Uh, if you've not seen this before, it's a component that allows you to use a mini SD card and play MP3s. So that's how we're going to have the sound. We're going to play MP3s. He can actually have multiple MP3s on there. You know, they're just numbered. Um, but he could even set it up where maybe he's got Darth Vader for some. And you got to pull. You will have to pull the SD Mini out to change. You know what's currently going to be selected programmatically. But you know you could have different kinds of sounds. You could have the kids' voices, whatever you want. If we go over, let's see. Okay, so these are the launch circuits. So let's see what we've got here. Let's go up to the top. Because this is where, you know, the rubber meets the road with this stuff. So I needed to know continuity. So I ended up using an audio, um, not audio, an auto uh, relay. Auto relays are 12 volts. They can handle a lot of current. Um, so I'm using a relay and I'm also using a MOSFET to switch the relay. This runs out to the rocket and has it's using a, an RCA connector. And at the other end of this wire are two alligator clips that clip onto the igniter. So if we look at this circuit in its default state, we have the ability to put five volts here. We have an LED here which will only light when we have continuity all the way out to the pad. So this LED will light, which means that this point here will be sunk to ground. So that's how we know whether we have continuity or not at the microcontroller. Are we at ground or not at ground at this point? So once we know that, we know that we have continuity. We continually check continuity also. Um, continuity does go away when we press the launch button because pressing the launch button causes the microcontroller to send a 5 volt high to the uh, MOSFET. The MOSFET then opens source to drain and this causes it to switch over. We get 14.8 volts here all the way out. And then the microcontroller has a timer in it. I'm still playing with the timings. You know, anywhere from maybe half a second, 500 milliseconds to a second is probably what we'll use. Uh, as you notice, I ask, I ask myself questions while I'm doing designs. Um, the answer to this so far has been no. I'm not putting a current limiter anywhere in here. I don't need to. The batteries have an internal resistance. There is a natural um, current limiter to some extent there. And we're talking about milliseconds. And I am using thicker uh, wire. The relay is designed for it, etc. So that's how it works. Basically, you send a signal to the MOSFET. MOSFET causes the relay to switch. Sends the power all the way out to the rocket, which ignites the igniter. The rocket takes off. Uh, as soon as power is removed from the launch, the MOSFET basically gets pulled to ground, but turns itself off, and now we're, we'll switch back over. The last but not least are these buttons. We have a safety button, and we have a launch button. So once everything is go for launch, if you will, the safety button can light up. Um, and once it's pressed, so you have four inputs here, you really only needed three. Um, but I ended up with, oh, maybe not. Look at that. Well, I guess you do need four. I got a five volt in. I've got LED. So yeah, okay. Uh, I thought you only needed three. I thought there was two grounds, but nope, five volts in. So this is one of those arcade buttons. And uh, what it does is it can light up. So it's kind of cool. Um, if you've not seen my retro pie cabinet video, you might want to check it out. You'll see the buttons there. I had some left over. Okay, so this comes on, the LED comes on, they press it, I sense that it's been pressed, and then I strobe in the code the launch button. Kind of a, a UI, you know, kind of indicator that they can press it. When they press it, 
you've already seen what happens at the at the MOSFET and the switch. Uh, sorry about this. Uh, I think it's my mouse, but you've seen this happen. And there's two of them. So we talked about having to support two rockets. There's two of them. How do we know which rocket? At the top here, we have a rocket selector switch right here. Jeez. Okay. So we've got rocket select one, rocket select two. Uh, the way he wants it is, is if rocket select one, the switch is set, um, you're, you're shooting off one rocket. Then you can turn it off, turn on two, you can switch it. If they're both up at the same time, that means they're shooting off in sync. It means we want to shoot two rockets off at the same time. So anyway, that's the schematic. It'll be up on uh, Bitbucket. You're welcome to look at it, change it, do whatever it is you want to do with it. If you see anything you think I've done wrong, please share with me. Um, I'm always learning. I'm not a professional hardware guy at all. I'm learning all the time. So please share with me if I've done something wrong. We're going to go over to the bench now and I'll show you the prototype. And then we'll talk about making uh, a PCB layout and ordering uh, some boards to actually make something more reliable than a prototype board. All right, see you at the bench. All right, so this is the proto board. Uh, based upon the schematics or fairly closely to the schematics of course I've done a lot of soldering desoldering building it out we'll look at that in a few minutes we've got a series of push buttons here for our three ready states we got some LEDs for our ready states safety button a launch button uh, a select for choosing a rocket we got a key over here we've got 20 feet of um, RCA cable wired up to allow us to um, simulate a launch and continuity. This is a uh, 12 volt automobile bulb which we can use to simulate the launch. Um, so let's go ahead and power it on. So we turn the key on and we see that the nano comes online. Now the first thing we need to do in a simulated or a launch is we got to uh, check the weather or, or ready state weather one. Clear. We check ready state two the range is clear. and we check ready state three. The pad is which took our LEDs and made them all green. And it also changed the state of the safety button. The safety button is now lit. <clears throat> now, when I press the safety button, the launch button should come on and start to cycle, and it is. And when I press the launch button, we should send five volts to the gate of that MOSFET, and we should then toggle the relay and send voltage and current the current down the wire there to launch, in this case, the bulb. And there you go. That's how it works. After that, it resets itself and it's ready to do everything again. The LEDs are off. So if we go ahead and take a look at this, let me go ahead and turn it off. And I'll start pulling off some of the parts. You can see we've got the um, the arcade switches here, and those go on the motherboard. You have you have a safety and you have a launch. We've got some LEDs, and again, I told you we were going to use JST connectors. You know, we got the LEDs. Looks like I'm getting, uh, and that's you know part of the problem, is you can get some. Uh, after building the proto board and you soldered and desoldered so many times, it's kind of easy to get some shorts and stuff. Um, I'll show you that in just a second. The key is, is you know, is it doing it what you wanted it to do? Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the push buttons for the three states. Here's our volume control, um, and that's the key and the toggle. Okay, so what we've got here is a couple MOSFETs. Uh, we got the nano board, the relays, the DF player mini. We've got the uh, LM386 amplifier. If we turn it on the back, you can see, yes, there's just tons of, of uh, mods and some solder joints. So yeah, it's funny, you always start off and this looks really, really good. And then the more changes you make and tests you make, it gets cluttered. and 
you know the solder joints aren't as good but it's all part of building the prototype um, so yeah so this is the prototype and from this after I've done a number of tests on the board you know all, as I'm putting it together I'll be testing smaller things making sure the LEDs are working making sure I can get sound out of it and I'm kind of building up um, if I'm uncertain of something I normally will breadboard that using a breadboard um, and then once like I wanted to make sure okay you know how much current is going to go through the MOSFET how does the relay work I, I breadboarded all that out first um, once I breadboarded it and proven that it works then I go to this proto board and I start to build that out now that I feel comfortable with the design I can go make any changes in KiCad or KiCad and um, build out a PCB so that's it that's how this project is working that's how you go through those requirements you build out your schematic you do some testing you look at some currents you look at some voltages you correct mistakes and um, then you basically go back to KiCad and finish the PCB design and get a PCB made so we'll look at that in the next part of this series um, that's it for this video in the next one we'll take a look at creating the PCB in KiCad, uh, getting it manufactured, uh, looking at it when it comes in, soldering it, and building the rest of it out, and going to shoot some rockets. So if you have any questions, if you found some things that I should do differently, please share. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, consider it. Um, thank you very much.